Tesla stock is one of the worst performing stocks in the S&P 500 year to date, and the sentiment by retail investors is very low and falling even faster. But when you look closely, you're going to see that there's a big group of investors who are buying. Who are they? The institutional firms. Institutional ownership of Tesla stock has doubled since a year ago. And today we'll watch a video of Jeff Kilberg of KKM Financials, who's saying to buy Tesla now. We've got Hans Nelson joining us. Hans has his own YouTube channel called Hans C. Nelson. Welcome, Hans. Thanks for having me, Herbert. Let's watch this video of uh, Jeff Kilberg. So let's take a look at what he's saying here. First of all, he's a buyer of both Tesla and NVIDIA, as many people are now these days, watching NVIDIA skyrocket. Uh, NVIDIA's uh, stock has surged 50% since January. Revenue expectations over $20 billion. Uh, so, of course, people are concerned. Are they reaching a high short-term pullbacks expected? But this is the time, right, when Tesla stock has fallen. Tesla stock has got low sentiment. This is when you might want to consider uh, buying more. He does talk about Tesla's $10 billion AI investment. We don't know where he got that number from, if that's true or not. So let's, let's listen to the video and get your thoughts on it. People had been selling Tesla to buy NVIDIA. You think the best thing to do is to invert that because you've probably made a lot of money on NVDA. Well, let's be clear, Sully. I'm long NVIDIA and I'm loading up here on Tesla. But I think you're absolutely right. When you look at NVIDIA, it's three times the size of Tesla from a market cap perspective. It's now the third largest. But the parabolic move in NVIDIA, if you look at a chart here, just since January, up 50%. And this is not up 50% from where it was cut in half in 2022. This is substantial. This was a nearly a trillion dollar company. Now to be up where it is, I think it can go from 750. It has to back and fill. So I think with earnings expectations, Think about it, Sully. The earnings expectations for revenue for NVIDIA are over $20 billion. That's three times. That's 3x what it was just a year ago from Q4. So I think there's high expectations. I know they're printing money right now, but I think there's a pullback short term. You're seeing RSI levels overbought, but Tesla seems to be a different type of AI approach. And I know it's the MAG 7. It's not getting any love right now. It's about to trade 200 today, so we are seeing some buyer step in. But nonetheless, Sully, I think we have to understand there's huge opportunity in Tesla here, and I think you have to profit take in the video. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that, Hans? Yeah, it's always interesting to hear the perspectives of Wall Street investors or, you know, people that are working inside of either hedge funds or institutions. It's, you know, a good reason to listen to someone like a Gary Black. Um, but this is, you know, one of those types of mindsets that you can hear. He, he's thinking about things in relatively short time frames. He's talking about, you know, what the likely moves are here within weeks, months, you know, maybe at maximum a year. And this is the outlook of people who are professionals in the industry, or at least, you know, a subset of them on, hey, you know, we've seen such a sharp rise in NVIDIA stock recently that it's probably time to, he said he's long, so he's going to keep his, you know, some of his shares, but he's going to also sell a portion of that position. And he's going to use that because it looks like, hey, you know, right now in Tesla's beaten down. I would say that I think obviously Tesla long term, um, this is where I'll, I'll kind of translate or um, yeah, I guess translate is a good word for it. His short term perspective into what I'm seeing is that, you know, Tesla's a big AI play that NVIDIA is obviously picks and shovels. They're trying to provide the substrate on which other companies can build valuable AI products and services. Um, Tesla, on the other hand, you know, they're really aiming at building those valuable AI products and services. And there's a portion of that that is dependent on NVIDIA. Uh, but there's also quite a bit of it that's not that, you know, they have their own inference computers, for example. But that challenge, there are the very few companies that are really seeing large um, consumer demand for AI products and services that there's kind of some niche areas where things are actually working well. Um, I think uh, there's a company that is providing frontline customer support that is based on LLMs and uh, text to speech models that that's actually, you know, providing some value inside of a business, but it's not necessarily a consumer facing product. You know, lots of people are using chat GPT, but it's more to explore and, um, you know, do a lot of like fun niche novel 
like novelty applications, um, these things aren't really doing the work that is providing tons and tons of value to to end users or, and uh, people living in the real world. That's completely different than you know what Tesla is trying to do in both the Tesla Optimus bot and with full self-driving. Like those are incredibly difficult problems to solve. Uh, NVIDIA is using you know their position to try and provide all kinds of entrepreneurs with the tools to solve those problems. But we haven't seen those problems really get solved. And that's going to be something that takes a much longer period of time to really nail down and figure out how to do how to do it correctly, how to build businesses around that. And so we're really early in this whole AI cycle right now. And there's a lot of expectations about where this is going to go that haven't really played out yet. And so I think that yes, you know, Tesla right now is underperforming something like NVIDIA, but it's because their visions are much grander. And there's still a lot of hard work that's left to do to actually make those businesses a reality. And I think that actually is going to take, you know, continue to take quite a while moving forward as well. That is this a great buying opportunity? Quite possibly. But I also could see a scenario where it still takes us several years from here for the market to really assign the type of value to Tesla and, you know, ultimately a much higher value because, like I said, the the application, you know, if you think about um, a company like Amazon, they got a lot of value from the market for providing Amazon Web Services. But think about all of the applications that are built on top of Amazon Web Services, things like Uber, um, you know, is an application that they need the foundation that something like AWS provides in order to build that company. And so there's all types of enterprise value that's built on top of the picks and shovels. And that, like the valuation of Uber and the entire market of, you know, other Web 2.0 companies that was built on top of something like AWS, you know, that dwarfs the amount of value that was ascribed to AWS uh, by itself. And usually it's like a roughly you can use a, a rule of 10, say it's an order of magnitude more in the size of the market than in the, uh, you know, the infrastructure and services. And so I think that that relationship is probably going to play out, you know, roughly the same way for just artificial intelligence powered products and services compared to the infrastructure build out that's going on today that whatever that infrastructure build out it should be you know roughly a tenth of the overall market that it enables in the future and i think that tesla is aiming for a large piece of that pie whereas nvidia is you know aiming for a large piece of the infrastructure pie um, and so while i think it's going to take longer for tesla to actually bring all those plans and execute on them and make them a reality and take a large market share there. Um, it's going to be a larger overall market that they're playing in than the one that NVIDIA is playing in today. And, um, you know, that'll yeah. be reflected in the market price over time. Fantastic points, Hans. You actually said what I was going to say. So there's Tesla the stock, NVIDIA Tesla the stock, and there's NVIDIA and Tesla the business. And what you were saying makes so much sense that, you know, there's they're, they're not competing with each other, but there's people who are looking at the stock short term. Yes, you can say, hey, how come, Te you know, NVIDIA is skyrocketing because their earnings and Tesla is falling. Maybe I should move some money. That That is fair if that's what you're looking at. But as a business, what you were saying is that actually, as you think about it, NVIDIA success is fantastic for Tesla and other companies because they take advantage of the chips uh, and they can actually do something with the chips. And this is accelerates Tesla's ability to do full self-driving and robots and AI that supports factories and energy and all that. So let's continue watching the rest of the video and um, we'll see what you think about it. No, you don't want all the, we call them Teslarians. I guess, we, what do we call the NVIDians? The Inv you don't want the, Inv I think I just made sure. that up. You, you don't want the NVIDians coming at you. You still love the company, but I, I get the mentality, which is, you know, everybody's like, oh, drop Tesla. It's not Mag 7, it's Super 6 or Spectacular 6 or whatever name they want to employ to it. I get your take. And being a smart trader is trying to find the opportunity when, when other people are selling. 
That's right, and I'm utilizing options to define my risk. I'm selling a risk reversal here in Tesla, selling the 185 March regular expiration, buying the 200 call. But I think you have to realize, just take a step back, Sully, not to get too wonky here, but from an AI perspective, I know we are really seeing Tesla viewed as more of a cyclical car company. I know it has a tech influence, but think of the spend. NVIDIA got a lot of press for buying SoundHound. They made a $4 million with an M million dollar investment in that right now this year in 2024 tesla is going to spend 10 billion dollars on their ai development so i think from the longer play i think you're going to see tesla back and fill up to 300 dollars i have you have to really put the emotion aside on elon musk you never know what's going to happen or what tweet's going to come out but i think from a true value from a true trade perspective this is a great pairs trade going in next wednesday where i think you will see a reprieve or a relent in the price in the video Hans, he says $10 billion in, in uh, AI investment. That is exactly what I has been wanting Tesla to do, but I don't know where he got that number from. I think the 10 billion might be the total R&D that Tesla has. I don't know where he got the AI investment. Do you think that he has special knowledge somehow that we don't have? Yeah, it's hard to, to know where that specifically is coming from. I really should actually do a little bit of deeper digging to see if we can kind of figure that out. But I would say it's at least directionally correct. I know that, you know, it could just be, he's looking at what does a hundred exaflops cost to build out and, you know, putting a, a rough number on that and multiplying the two, you know, what does it cost per exaflop and multiplying that times a hundred um, to get to that number. It's really hard to say, but, we do know that Tesla's obviously spending a lot of money in this area. And really, you know, all of these companies that are spending huge amounts of money on this infrastructure build out at this point in time, they're doing so with an expectation that they will actually get a positive return on investment. And, um, you know, that's one of the areas where we know Tesla's extremely good at the return on invested capital metric ROIC. Um, but a lot of the tech companies really are are pretty good at that. And that's why they're spending this money here is because they expect to be able to make a lot more money off of the products and services that can run on top of this infrastructure than it costs to install the infrastructure up front. And it, when you see a company like, uh, you know, Microsoft, like Amazon, um, like OpenAI, like Tesla making these investments, uh, it should be, you know, either if, if they cannot execute on turning that into revenue, then that's going to be problematic. Um, but if you believe in the ability of leadership and management to execute on new product and service development, then you would hope that that would turn into actually large uh, amounts of revenue and not just large amounts of revenue, but hopefully high margin revenue as well. Okay, let's take a look at the rest. He talks about the S&P 500 and what's happening here. Jeff Kilberg, got a macro view on the markets right now? I, we just talked about two of the most important stocks that are out there, but do you have sort of a, a, a macro view? Are we ever going to see this broadening out that some people are talking about, that, you know, all the 3,000 other public companies that exist will finally get a little love? I think that it is coming, and I know Ryan Dietrich talked about this morning on Twitter about this small cap explosion. If you see a breakout in small caps, that's the breath you're looking for. But bigger picture, Sully, we can grapple about when or you even talk about if how many points are going to be cut. But we are going to see a rate cut this year in 2024 of 100 basis points, and that's coming. I don't care if it comes in March, May, or June, but that's coming. And that, that's why you saw those animal spirits that Kate referred to. You're seeing people trying to buy, utilize that $8 trillion in cash. They're trying to get it to work because they've been chasing, and the bears continue to be in the hurt locker. That's just a fact. So I think there's more room to run to the upside. I think we're going to test back and fill here to this 4950 level in the S&P 500, but we're going to make new highs, I think, next month. Yeah, very interesting. Hey, the smart stock market is still uh, very high, being supported by Typically, the big names only, not not everybody quite yet. And yet, the rate cuts haven't even have happened. And when the rate cuts happen of the MAG-7, it's going to be Tesla that's going to have the most um, potential gain out of this. Uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, Tesla is definitely, as a company that does rely, you know, it's not just a car company, but it a big part of its business is a car company. And um, sales of large ticket items like that are very dependent on interest rates. And so if we do have cuts in interest rates, that should have massive impact on uh, just the ability of Tesla to continue to keep prices at where they are, but have lower 
monthly payments to consumers, which will increase demand. Um, or, you know, if, if they actually have too much demand at that point in time and the wait times keep piling up at that point in time, they can raise prices even and be able to collect because basically consumers are spending roughly, you know, maybe it's a mildly compressing amount of, uh, spend on their auto loans today versus a year ago but you know roughly it should be about the same and the difference is that most of that extra money now is going to whoever's doing the financing because they're charging a larger amount of interest and less of it is going to the auto manufacturers and i think this is something that you're really seeing play out across the auto industry that you don't get as much visibility into it from the legacy auto manufacturers as you do with tesla um, and so people kind of think that there's two different things going on there. Um, but if you could take the dealership out of the in between the consumer and the manufacturer for these legacy auto companies, I think you'd be seeing largely the same type of data. And so that should be a big deal. But then it also has a massive impact, like he said, on the ability of the gains that, you know, a lot of the mag seven have seen to filter down to smaller companies because they are operating under a lot of constraints you know whether it's consumer spending that is contracted during higher interest rates or their ability to access capital as a business and to fund their operations and all of that stuff gets harder when interest rates are higher and so if interest rates come down it also is just a positive thing that is a tailwind for the economy as a whole and spending and business and economic activity in general. Right. One uh, other interesting stat that I wanted to share was institutional ownership percentage. And if we look at the, this uh, table that Benzer, Benzer 3 shared with us, fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Institutional ownership of Tesla doubled since December 2022. since so this is a year ago, uh, a little bit over a year ago. So if you look at from December 20th to 2022 of the, all of December, of January, 2022 institutional ownerships uh basically is at here what is what percentage is that on, on the share or the, yeah this is uh shares uh, times a thousand was around five hundred thousand shares owned by five million shares i guess uh, owned by institution and now it's popped up doubled even more than doubled. yeah it looks like more than doubled tripled more than tripled yep since uh 2022 so all of, this is all the last year right so mm -hmm. obviously they're starting to wake up and you can see the trend here it's likely going to keep going up as we as we move forward uh, I, yeah, what's your thinking maybe maybe it doesn't yeah so i mean i don't know if it if it goes up from here or not i would say you know it depends on where the the price of the stock goes you know over the the short to medium term there's really two, you know, if institutions are buying, they've got to be buying from someone. And so there's two groups of people that that could be from. Um, I would say that, you know, some of those shares are probably due to Elon having to liquidate some shares. That's kind of within that time frame. And so Elon made some shares available for institutions to pick up. Uh, but the other one is it's pretty much textbook capitulation on the part of retail investors who have really gotten lost in the noise or you know for whatever you know different people invest for different reasons they have different time horizons and so if you needed your money during this time and then you are out in the conversation and you're hearing all this negative fud and you just think oh my gosh this company is bad and it's getting worse and you sell well usually those are the times when things start to turn around and it's because you know these institutional investors they like to sell stocks that retail investors are extremely excited about. And then when retail investors get depressed on a stock, they like to come in and buy um, because they kind of take a contrarian view to whatever retail is saying. And so I, I think that that's definitely going to be at least a big part of this story is that while all of the talk and the noise around Tesla is very negative. You know, a lot of smart money at this point in time is viewing that as a good buying opportunity and they're loading up on shares. And I would say that this is probably, you know, it, it's hard to know when the next rally is going to be that's going to really take off for Tesla. But it seems like institutional investors are 
more convinced right now that that is something that's going to happen over the medium term than retail investors are. And, you know, it's kind of demonstrated in that chart. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've been reporting a number of shows now where we've one by one, we see all these institutional investors talking about energy. They've, they've been touring the data, the Megapack Center and Lathrop, several of them have. They're talking about uh, AI and robotics, um, you know, following and trying to deep dive in Tesla bot. So these things are starting to happen. And uh, meanwhile, it's <laughs> like you said, a stock hasn't moved. Thank you so much, Hans. Follow him on his YouTube channel, Hans C. Nelson. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.